We are at the Center for Computer Research in Music and Acoustics. Our acronym is CCRMA, but we pronounce it KARMA. We're going to take this apart and make a, an electronic musical instrument out of it. At the end, we'll have a feedback piano. We are going to take off pretty much every element of this piano, all the panels, the keys, the key bed, and basically strip it down to just the frame, the strings, the soundboard. In any city in America, you can find a free or nearly free Junker upright piano on Craigslist. As long as you haul it away, it's yours. Uh. Hey. It's almost like instead of plugging into a guitar amplifier, you can plug into this piano and play any note and any combination of notes and any timbre and have it come out through the piano. Here's the soundboard to which we've attached some transducers that shake the soundboard and the strings will sympathetically ring, giving us this sound. We're making a feedback loop using this microphone and this microphone gets sent in to the audio interface. There's some software written in Max MSP that controls the feedback and basically keeps it in check, keeps it from becoming too overwhelming. We're here to really discover what is it about computers that we can leverage for making music and to really deeply experiment and play with sound. A lot of things come together here when people just play with sound. Karma is part of the music department at Stanford University. Students work here more or less 24 hours a day. So there's always strange sounds coming from the building. Karma's been around for about 40 years. This is where frequency modulation synthesis was first developed, uh, which is basically used in every keyboard in the 80s and still used in a lot of cell phone ringtones. So we wanted to see what would happen if we took a spring reverb unit like this out of a guitar amp and recreated it using a slinky. Oh man, hey Chris, check this out. There's a lot of work here that's research into signal processing and audio effects. There's also quite a bit in new musical instruments. All right, this is a, an electronic rub board. It's a MIDI instrument. It's a work in progress. So my idea was to try to retrofit it so that you could not only play it in the traditional way, but also have an, an added benefit of being able to map any kind of synthesized sound to the movement of the keys. For example, there's a maraca, there's water drops. Here's some sleigh bells. <laughs> You just use one hand and you try and... It's not very satisfying, you can't play very fast. Um, and so I wanted to make a drum that would hit back at me to make it possible to do that. This is a loudspeaker here. I've cut off about two, the two inches from the end of a coffee can and glued that to the woofer. So there's a sensor under each of these numbers. From those sensors come through here, through these amplifier modules, into a little computer here. Whenever you hit the top of this lid, uh, the computer causes the woofer to push upwards back on you. And so that's why it does this. You can see I'm not adding any energy to the system. Karma is, is one of these really crazy and wonderful places where a lot of different people from a lot of different disciplines get together and, and basically create really cool stuff. Goodwill is a great place to get cheap toys and monkey around with the electronics, see if we can come up with something that makes some new and novel sounds. Basically, I'm looking for any sort of battery-operated toy that makes some sort of controllable sound. <laughs> it's worth it just for that one. This is the little memory chip that has the sound in it. And basically, you can wire this up however you like, crossing wires and just seeing what happens. So 
So I took this toy that I got at Goodwill and I just put a voltage divider in it. What this does is essentially turns down the amount of juice coming out of the battery. One of the main threads of research that goes on here is um, human-computer interaction. PlaySound is a, um, an adult-size, interactive musical playground. There's a teeter-totter, a merry-go-round, and each one of these things uses different kinds of sensors to produce music based on how people are playing on it. So one example of this, the type of sensors we use, is the Wii Remote for the teeter-totter. And the Wii Remotes can pick up how you're moving in, you know, every different axis of, of movement. And we wrote software that allows that information to be turned into music. Anything we program in can be interpreted from the movement and turned into music. These speakers are actually made out of a six gallon trash can. Just stock audio car stereo speakers. And that's, it's really that simple. And they sound, I think they sound pretty good. No matter what technology has existed, artists are always trying to make sense of their world and the technology by incorporating that technology into their art. Lift off. I'm the director of the Stanford Laptop Orchestra. We really are an ensemble in the traditional sense. It's simply that our instruments are different. The computer is making decisions on its own, running different programs and algorithms. At the same time, the human players are making another set of decisions, and this is all kind of coordinated, perhaps, by the conductor. We can use the keyboard, um, as well as the trackpad or the mouse, and we can use that in, in several ways. For example, we use the trackpad to actually bow. And then we use things like the set and motion sensor inside the computer to tilt the laptop, but use that as kind of a very expressive way to control music. And then we use these hemispherical speakers that we've built um, to essentially give an identity to each player. searching for parts and we went to Ikea and got a $20 salad bowl. From here we can take a, a hole saw and cut out our, our six speaker holes. Getting a commercial amplifier, this, you can take it apart. And then we take two other of these and we make a stack. High-end car speakers, an on and off switch and six discrete inputs. You can get six channels of sound coming outward. Karma is really one of these very special places where you can explore this wide world of what the computer is capable of doing in terms of music. We're still trying to figure out how can we both leverage the human for what humans are good at doing, at the same time leveraging computers you know, to do what they're good at doing and finding a really good balance between the two. At Karma, I think we're forever seeking that balance. Machines have been helping us make music since the 3rd century BC, when Greek maker Concibius created the first pipe organ, using water pressure to force air through the pipes. In 1761, maker Johann Maisel created an automated band called the Panharmonicon, which was programmed by altering the pattern of pins on a rotating barrel. It impressed Beethoven enough to compose a piece specifically for this one-man band. Music went electric with Thaddeus Cahill's 200-ton monster, the Telharmonium. Introduced in 1906, long before the age of radio, it could transmit music over telephone wires to businesses and homes, making Cahill the father of Muzak. Flash forward to the 60s, where Robert Moog developed the most flexible musical tool yet, an electronic synthesizer capable of creating a myriad of sounds, limited only by a musician's imagination and taste.
Major funding for MAKE is provided by Geek Squad, 